All right, so this is one of those things that should absolutely not be a controversial question, but for some odd reason, um, it somehow is. Um, I see it in a lot of the comments um, that I, you know, in, on the videos that I post sometimes, um, and, and, and for some reason, people see it as, you know, very distinct things. Uh, we're going to talk about physical intimacy and, you know, when to start incorporating, uh, you know, physical intimacy into a relationship. People then create all of these different like levels of what physical intimacy, you know, uh, could be, uh, right? So apparently, for some reason, they have like all of these different things. So, so when you ask a, a, a lot of people, especially women, when you ask a woman like, oh, like, do you think that sleeping with a guy on a first date is, is, is a good idea, right? Most women, most women. Um, will tell you that, no, they don't believe that it's a good idea. But the same women, for some reason, when asked, do you think it's a good idea to kiss? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. kissing, for sure. Yeah, kissing is not the same, right? Yeah, kiss, kissing is, is completely okay. You're like, you need to kiss just to see whether or not you guys are connecting, whether or not you guys have chemistry, whether or not he's a good kisser, right? Because what if he's a bad kisser? You don't want to go on a couple of dates with someone who's, you know, potentially a bad kisser, right? That's a deal breaker for me. So I obviously don't want to be. I hear that so many times. So I'm just going to like put this to rest once and for all, all right? Uh, when I say physical intimacy, the reason why I use that term is because it really is a category that, you know, uh, uh, is comprised of all of these different things. Uh, and the reason why I try to bunch them together, right, is not because I feel like it's like the same amount of effort or whatever, you know what I mean? Like sleeping with a guy. I understand that it's not as, as intimate, uh, right, or we don't consider it as intimate to like kiss someone on the lips, right? Make out with someone, or to you know be in bed with someone, and you know uh, uh, um, you know what goes in bed. So I don't think that it's the same thing. However, right, um, and obviously there's, there's there's no such thing where you can, you can kiss people in public, but you can obviously not like sleep with people in public, right? There's there's there's, there's le different levels. However, here's why I bunch them together, and why you should too. Uh, when it comes to deciding when you want to um, introduce physical intimacy into um, a relationship with a new person you started dating. Biologically speaking, right, the reason why, let's say, when we kiss each other, right, whether that's the first date or not, right, when, when, at the, especially at these early stages, though, uh, biologically, the reason why it feels so good when you are kissing a new person, you know, like why it makes you, you know, the reason why is because it releases a whole bunch of hormones in your brain. And for the most part, right? There's a, it's a cocktail of different hormones, but for the most part, you're releasing a lot of, you know, dopamine, right? The, the feel-good hormone, and you're releasing oxytocin. Um, especially as a woman, you're releasing a lot of oxytocin. And oxytocin is called the bonding hormone, right? It's literally um, a hormone that as women, women, you release um, during um, the stages when you're breastfeeding your newborn child, you're literally releasing a lot of that oxytocin. Oxytocin creates that unconditional love. Like it, it creates that, 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 that bonding feeling that we want you know, uh, to feel connected with this person, um, right? And, 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 and we are releasing the same hormones uh, regardless of the type of physical intimacy that we're engaging in. So for example, whether we are sleeping with each other or we're kissing each other, and sometimes even like, you know how you like, can hold hands or play with each other's hands across the table, uh, right? When you guys are on the first date and you guys, right? You're releasing the same exact stuff. It literally sometimes gives you, it gives you like these butterflies in your stomach and makes you feel all, you know what I mean? High and, 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 and good. You know, it's literally because your brain is releasing all of these feel good um, hormones along with these bonding hormones. So what are we actually doing? We are creating uh, an emotional attachment. We're creating an emotional bond, right? And I, and I say that especially for women because when when men and women engage in these things, it's biologically it's not the same for very specific reasons, right? For 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 for, for the reasons of procreation and what happens after you know you you potentially get pregnant and, and have a child. Like it literally, as a woman, you're releasing a lot more oxytocin because you want to have that 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 that, that male in your life as a protector while you are literally. Um, right, carrying a child, right? Why well, you might not be able to like do all of these other things to protect yourself. So you literally want to have someone by your side um, and, and during the early stages of, of the child's development, just biologically speaking. This is not what like society, this is just biologically speaking. So we're literally made, right, men and women in a specific way. So as a woman, you're releasing a lot of these hormones regardless of the actual 
thing that you decide to engage in. So whether that's actually sleeping with them or that's you know playing footsie under the table or playing with your hands or kissing, you're releasing the exact same thing. So you are prematurely, uh, right before you give yourself a real chance to really get to, know, get to know a person, you're prematurely already creating this emotional bond. Right on a very strict like I know so many people think oh, that doesn't happen to me. Like a kiss doesn't mean anything. It doesn't. You don't even realize. Right, but the whole if it feels good, if you want to do that, right, which is like if you didn't want to do that, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. But the the, the fact that you want to do that and then it feels good when you do that should tell you that literally there's a reason why it feels good, and it, that's because your brain is releasing all of that stuff. Right, so whether you consider it like the same or not the same, you're you're literally shooting yourself in the foot because now you're creating an emotional connection, an emotional bond. With a person that at this point, if it's your first date or second date or even third date or even fourth date, you don't really know, right? So you're already creating a bond with someone that you haven't even really taken the time. And when you're creating a bond, um, right, with someone like that, when you're creating an all of these, what, what happens? If you see the red flags, you go, oh, you know what? It's not that bad. That's going to that's gonna fix itself. That's going to change once we get closer together. Once he gets to know me a little bit more, we start blinding ourselves, to the red flags. We are literally what we're doing by releasing all of these hormones into our brain. We're clouding our judgment. We are becoming a lot more, you know, reactive when it comes to this, and a lot less analytical when it comes to assessing compatibility with this person. So we're no longer really paying attention to what they say or do, and and making sure that there is like a, a, a genuine, you know, compatibility in this relationship. But we're just basing ourselves based on the again on these hormones that are released in our brain that are telling us, you know, this person, you know, stay stay with this person. Right, so we're 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 just putting ourselves in in a position of disadvantage when again we are just not acting based on our best interests at this point, and and often potentially like we're doing the complete opposite of that. We're ignoring red flags. We are you know just just shoving things under the rug. We're like oh, you know that's not a big deal. I, I can live with that because we're engaging in these uh, you know intimate things. And again, as far as your brain is concerned, it doesn't really make a difference if it was a kiss. Or it was a makeout session in the car, or it was, you know what I mean, an actual like sleeping with the person. All right, to a certain extent, obviously, like a little kiss on the cheek here and there. You know, I wouldn't do that to be honest with you on the first date because I don't want. There's a second reason that I'm about to talk to um, to you about right now. But for the most part, it doesn't really make a difference. So don't like say, oh, this is okay and this is not okay. As far as your brain is concerned, it's doing the exact same thing. It's releasing the exact same things, and in often in the exact same quantities. Now, the second reason, um, and this is, again, really, really important, is that whatever levels of physical intimacy you decide to engage, uh, we tend to um, automatically want to either match it on the second date or even more so, we want to elevate the level of intimacy. So I'll give an example. If we kiss on the first date, right? So like it's the end of the date and I lean in and we make out for like, I don't know, a few seconds, right? It's like it creates a precedent. Now it's like that's the baseline, on the second date, I almost feel, right, and, and, and maybe you, you as well, that we're already at that level. Like, we should be on that level, right? We should be doing that. Like, we're already at that stage of our relationship when we make out with each other, when we kiss each other. So on the second date, we're almost expected to do that again because if we don't, then we're like, oh, did I do something wrong? Did she do something wrong? Like, you know, like, why are we not doing this? Like, you know what I mean? Does she not like me? Whatever. Like, we're already expecting this to happen again. And not only that, but we're expecting to elevate it. So now when we kiss, we might kiss for a little bit longer, right? And we might put our hands in certain places now that we haven't done last time, you know? And, and, and it kind of like snowballs from there. So by the third date, we're like, oh, by the fourth date or whatever, right? We already expected to do more than that. So now it's like, well, you want to come over? Like we're already at that level, right? And again, like biologically, like we're flooded with all of these like feel good hormones. If we made out on the first date and that feels so good because it's new, it's exciting, it floods our brains, you know, what are we really focused on on the second date or the, or the next date after that? We're focused on that same thing. Like I'm not thinking about like trying to get to know you and your goals and your values and your beliefs and all of these important things. I'm not focused on that right now. I'm like, how can I, what can I say, what can I do in order to get that dopamine hit again? In order for me to flood my brain with all of these feel good things again, uh, what do I need to say or do in order to do that? That's what we're focused on. Most of the time on, on both sides, both on the, on the male and female side. So again, it creates a certain precedent, right? And, and it shifts our focus, it clouds our judgment, and whether it's just kissing or whether that's... So you're wondering, by the time, you know, this video, what, what, how long is an appropriate time, 
right? And, and so many people like are waiting for like a specific amount of dates. Like there is like a magic number, like, oh, it's this many dates. Let me tell you why. It's important for you to create and focus on, 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 on assessing compatibility. So making sure that you take the time, right? Because it, it doesn't just come down to how many dates, but it comes down to the quality and the frequency of your interactions, right? So ideally what you would want to do is go on at least one date a week. So one time a week, you see each other in person and you do some sort of an activity together out. So like, it's not just like, hey, come over and like we watch a movie and fall asleep because it doesn't really allow us to get to know one another, but let's do something. So you guys go out, play bowling, go for coffee, watch a movie, uh, have dinner, um, walk in the park, uh, whatever that thing is, right? It allows you to sit down or walk or whatever and have a conversation, get to know each other a little bit better and start assessing compatibility. Start getting to know each other and, 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 and not just paying attention to words, but also actions and figure out like, you know, what are the other person's, uh, you know, uh, goals? What are their beliefs? What are their values? So we can see whether or not that they align with ours and then we can assess that compatibility factor. Once we see that there is compatibility, that we want the same things, that we might even want the same things with each other, that we you know, have similar values, we have similar beliefs, we see life and the world and all of these things in a, in, a, in a fairly similar fashion. We don't have to see like eye to eye on absolutely everything, but healthy relationships are built mostly on, on similarities, not differences. So once we see that and we can assess that, then we are ready. Right? I always say, create an emotional bond, an emotional connection before you create a, a, a physical one. So once we establish that we have that compatibility and we are emotionally, you know what I mean, compatible and that, uh, that, that, that there's, there's some sort of level of, 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 of connection that's, that's being built there emotionally, now we can introduce the physical. Uh, right? I'm not saying it's, it should be one or the other, but there's a time and place for everything, especially in dating. There's a time and place for everything. It's, it's a very... Um, you know, el delicate uh, uh, thing, you know, dating. Like we need to know when to introduce certain things. Um, so again, you want to know how many dates. I want to tell you if it's before, right? Because again, it really comes down to like the quality and the quantity of the interactions. Uh, but if you have been on less than, I would say six to eight actual physical in-person dates, uh, when you have gone out and did stuff, again, not just like, hang out at home and watch TV or what, but actually did some things. If you have been on less than six to eight of those, you're not ready to introduce physical intimacy. And I mean, and I know that a lot of people really hate to you know, hear that and I'm completely okay with that because again, you do you. Um, just, just, just don't complain. You know what I mean? That you're not getting the results that you want or that men just want to you know, do one thing with you and nothing else. Um, or you know that you're picking the wrong men or whatever it is. Don't stop complaining about that, right? Um, if you want something different, what, what do they say? You know, like if, if if you want something you've never had, you need to do something that you've never done. So if you continue doing the same thing over and over and over again, um, you're gonna continue getting the same results. So you're like, oh, I'm just gonna kiss him when I feel like it. I'm just gonna sleep with him when I feel like it. You do you. You know, nobody's gonna stop you. So it's, it's, you know what I mean? Like life's too short. Don't don't live by my rules. Don't live by anybody else's rules. You live by your own. But make sure that your own rules align with your goals, that you are actually getting closer <coughs> to your goals every time you stick to your guns. Um, otherwise, you'll need to start making some changes in order to attract different types of results. So I would say, if you haven't been on six to eight dates yet, I'm not saying that that's the limit, by the way. You could go beyond that. Um, again, based on your specific situation, based on your specific goals, based on, you know what I mean? Like the specific interactions with that person. Don't just say, oh, it's been six now. Now it's, a, you know, no, it's like, it really depends. Like, do I feel ready? Have I established those things that I talked about earlier? Compatibility, emotional connection. Have I established that? But it should, it should not, if you already feel like you have those things on day three, you're lying to yourself because it's impossible. It takes time to get to know someone. That's why I'm saying that it should be at least this many right? Six to eight dates, um, if not more, but that would be the bare minimum, right? So if you feel like, oh, I'm already ready. Like I feel like fourth dates and I already know everything that I need. Then no, you don't. You're lying to yourself right now. And you're just, again, I don't know if it's because you introduced a little bit of physical intimacy earlier or because you're really desperate to, you know, be with someone and it's more important to you. Like you just don't want to be alone. You're not really as focused on finding the right person. You just don't want to be alone anymore. And then you're jumping into it most of the time, 99% of the time, it ends up you know, pretty badly. So um, that should be your, if you want a magic number, that should be it. If you haven't been on this many dates yet, you shouldn't even be thinking about uh, that just yet. And I'm not, this is not like a conservative thing. Like, you know what I mean? I'm very, 
um, you know, uh, intimacy positive person. And I feel like it's it's an absolute super important, um, you know, aspect and component of building a healthy relationship with someone and the part of getting to know someone, um, right? But don't worry about whether or not they're a good kisser. Like so many people are like, oh, but they're, they're, the, the first kiss wasn't that good. What do you expect? You guys don't know the first thing about each other. You guys are extremely nervous around one another. You guys don't know what the other person likes, doesn't like. You guys, you guys don't know the first thing about how to approach each other, right? Like the, the, a kiss becomes better when it's a little bit more intimate. A kiss, a kiss becomes better when it means something. A kiss becomes better when you know, there's an emotional connection there as well. Beyond just the physical, we get to know each other. We feel more comfortable to experiment. We kind of know what you know, where, where, how far can we go, and what we what the other person likes and doesn't like. The kiss just becomes better. Do you know what I mean? So, like, don't worry so much about like, oh yeah, the first kiss. Yeah, no shit. Why wouldn't he be? You know what I mean? Terrible. Um, you guys don't know each other, so that's completely okay. Don't focus on that. That's you know, again, it's more much much more important that you. You know what I mean? What about the emotional part? If, what if that's not? But you're already creating that, yeah, that, 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 that bond, that connection um, prematurely. Hopefully that answers your question. Hopefully that gives you some guidance. I'll see you guys in my next video.